And now, from PAX TV Studio 611, your host, Richard Thomas. Good evening, and welcome to It's a Miracle. Tonight's show is full of suspense and surprises. You'll meet people caught in incredibly dangerous situations, each of whom receives an unexpected miracle that saves their lives. We begin with a story that is sure to get your heart racing. It's full of twists and turns and a plunge into cold, deadly waters. On the afternoon of November 10th, 1997, Kitty Gritsky was late for work at the ice cream shop she owned in Davie, Florida. She was already agitated as she slid behind the wheel of her brand new car. I went out to start the car, put the keys in, turn the steering wheel. Nothing happened. The car would not, no lights, no nothing. It was just sat there. With no time to spare, Kitty quickly called an employee, Lisette McCallum, for a ride. It was Lisette's day off. Hello? Lisette, it's Kitty. My car is not working and I am late for work. Can you please pick me up and take me? She sounded agitated, like she was frustrated that her car wouldn't start and that she didn't want to be late for work. And I was already doing something, but I told her I'd go by and pick her up. But by the time Lisette arrived, Kitty had managed to start the car. Lisette, it's working! And she's like, oh, I got my car started. And I said, what? She's like, yeah, I just jumped in it and it started. And I was like, all right, well then I'll follow you all the way back to work just to make sure you get there all right. The two women set out in tandem, heading south on Knob Hill Road, Kitty's car pulling farther ahead. I couldn't follow her because she was going too fast. She was probably doing like 65, 70. When I looked in the rearview mirror, Lisette was quite a ways behind me. So I realized I must have been going over the speed limit. Suddenly, Kitty lost control of the car and swerved into the other lane. Her car left the road, rolling twice and landing in an irrigation canal. Oh my God. The accident looked really bad. I didn't think she would have lived through it. By the time Lisette reached the place where the car had plunged into the water, only its trunk was visible above the surface. I saw just barely the top of her car and a bunch of bubbles. Then her car went under. Lisette watched helplessly, knowing that her friend was trapped below and drowning. Only a miracle could save her now. The conclusion, when it's a miracle, continues. On the afternoon of November 10th, 1998, Kitty Gritsky was late for work and having car problems. And so, she enlisted the help of an employee, Lisette McCollum, to follow her into town. But Kitty wasn't the only person running late that day. Mike Aldrich, a plant operator at the Copper Water Treatment Facility, was just finishing a long day fighting a pipeline emergency. I was running really late because of overtime and I had made a promise to my wife that we would go shopping that night and I was already two hours late leaving work. Mike was traveling north on Knob Hill Road when suddenly another vehicle swerved in front of him. It looked like it was gonna come over and actually strike me. But at the last second, the car veered to the right. And as I drove by, um, I looked through my rear view mirror and I could see the car disappearing. Mike made a quick U-turn and rushed back to the accident site where he found Lisette standing near the water. I asked her, where's the car? And she said, the car's out in the water. I said, well, are you okay? She goes, no, no, it wasn't me, it was my boss. She's drowned. I realized that she had been under the water for a very long time and that I need whatever was somebody was gonna do, it was gonna have to be quick. 
Incredibly, just two days before, Mike had been certified as a search and rescue diver. He didn't have his diving equipment with him, but he did have special training in underwater search techniques. Okay. Mike swam backwards as Lisette directed him to the murky spot where the car went down. The water was over 20 feet deep and filled with dirt and debris. You couldn't see anything. You couldn't, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. It was a matter of repetitive dives and uh, doing what we call a sweep method, where I move my hands back and forth, trying, just trying to hit anything that you can feel. Where is she? Where Mike is she? came up empty-handed on his first dive. Exhausted, and with time running out, he dove again for a second time. As you dive, you have to remember that you would like to make as many dives as you can. So you just keep going until your body physically can't. When Mike reached the bottom, the first thing he touched felt like an arm. He grabbed it and headed for the surface. When you're down underneath the water, you can't see anything. So when I came up, I didn't know what I had. When I broke the surface, I saw that it was her. Kitty had been fully submerged underwater for nearly 10 minutes. By the time I got her to shore, I thought she was dead. She wasn't breathing, she was not responsive. Did you call 911? Yeah. Once on shore, Mike immediately began preparations for CPR. I tilted her head to the side and water and all kinds of dirty stuff came running out of her mouth. And, and at that moment, she just, somehow she took a breath and she started to breathe. During the 10 minutes she'd spent underwater, Kitty had ingested nearly a gallon of badly polluted water. Her core body temperature had plunged to 91 degrees. She was hypothermic. All of these, she survived. It was a miracle. God was with me, and my guardian angel was watching over me, and it wasn't my time. Five days later, Kitty's husband, David, escorted her home from the hospital, weak, but recovering. Come on, honey, I'll help you. One of their first stops was the accident site. Mike happened to be there, retrieving debris from the crash. Honey, this is Mike. This is the man who saved your life. Oh, Mike. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. That God felt wonderful meeting Thank Mike there. So much. It was like he was at that time and that place to show me the miracle of how I'd been saved. Someone must have been watching over Catherine that day. How else can you explain the car trouble that forced her to have an employee follow her to work? Lisette McCallum was the only person to see the exact spot where the car went underwater. The only one who knew where to search for her. And of all the people to drive by at that instant, Mike turned out to be a certified search and rescue diver. If Mike had not been at that appointed time, at that appointed place, I would have drowned, without a doubt. Take away any one little miracle or any, any one thing, and it wouldn't have happened this way. I really can't explain it other than being God's hand or a fate. I've learned a lot through this. I learned that instead of rushing through life at 90 miles an hour, we have to take time to enjoy the little things along the way. I know without a doubt that there's a guardian angel watching over us at all times and my guardian angel freed me from that accident.